Ikim Inspirasi Inforia Islami. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. You're with me, Mazina Ismail. Alhamdulillah, in this program, Great Works of the Muslim World, and in this final episode, uh, sadly to say that uh, this has come to the final one, with Husni Muhammad Amin, uh, our guest uh, for the past 11th episode. Uh, with a series of great works of the Muslim world. We welcome once again Mr. Muhammad Usni Muhammad Amin, Senior Research Officer at IKIM, Centre for Science and Environment Studies, or short as KIAS. Assalamualaikum, Usni. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mas, How are you? Thank you for having me here again. For, I think the last time for, the, for this season. My pleasure. And I hope this will not be the end. Probably we will have uh, other programs coming on with you, inshallah. Uh, inshallah, yeah. we will we'll plan something on the pipeline. Sure, sure. So in the meantime, we would like to cover our final episode with this uh, topic, Rehla, the travels of Ibn Jubair. One of my favorite uh, topics to discuss on the travels of Ibn Jubair. So would you first introduce to us who was Ibn Jubair and how did he tra- his travels begin? Yeah, uh, all right. Uh, thank you for that. So, I'm Bilal Nishatun Rajim, Smilah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, was Salat was Salam, Ashrafil and Bia Umar Salin, while it also be at mine. So, uh, we decided, uh, you remember that a uh, few days ago we decided that we we're going to talk about this figure, uh, Ibn mm-hmm. Jubair, uh, because we now with the uh, less, uh, I mean, uh, lifting some of the restrictions from the for the uh, movement control order. So, right. we think that uh, when people decided to travel and and take vacation so uh, mm. this is an apt uh, you know way of saying or, you know, to talk something about uh, travel yeah. so uh, ibn jubair uh, he was a known uh, geographer he uh, was a traveler mm. and a poet uh, from andalusia in muslim spain and uh, his full name was abul hussein muhammad ibn muhammad uh, ahmed ibn jubair and uh, he was born in 1145 that is in the midst of, uh, I mean, uh, the end of the first crusade and the start of the second uh, crusade. We see that in the in Syria, in Palestine, uh, Muslims were preparing to take over uh, Jerusalem uh, from the crusaders. So, uh, but this is, Ibn Jubair was born in Muslim Spain. Uh, was, mm-hmm quite removed from uh, the action, but still we must have known of the news about uh, crusaders trickling down, you know, reinforcements trickling down from Europe to uh, Palestine, the Holy Land. And uh, Ibn Jubair was a descendant of Abdul Salam al-Jubair of uh, Bani Kinana tribe in Mecca. Remember this was, uh, they were they were part of the early contingent that entered Spain with the Arab army uh, sent in 740 uh, AD by Caliph Hisham ibn Abin Malik uh, to quell the rebellion of barbarians in special uh, in the Spanish uh, territories. So Ibn Jubair was known for being the author of the book uh, Rehla, or shall we translate it as Travels? which is a record of his journey from the city of Mecca to uh, from the, from uh, his place in Cordova to Mecca to perform pilgrimage which he undertook from uh, 1183 to 11, 1185 means that he was only 38 years old when he did his tra- when he uh, undergone his travels that is the years before uh, the outbreak of the Third Crusade, uh, two years before Salahuddin al uh, he took Jerusalem from the Crusaders. And uh, who was he? He was a, he was a government official. And because of this, uh, because of his position, uh, he was allowed to continue his studies at Yativa, that is in, uh, in Spain. And he had talent for writing. Uh, be, because of this, he was appointed as a chancellor or a secretary of state by the governor of Granada, uh, Abu Sa'id Uthman bin Abdul Mu'min. And uh, and how did his uh, travel begin? I mean, this is a, 
in a popular uh, story about uh, when in a in a government function uh, mm -hmm. with all the dignitaries uh, he was forced to drink seven cups of wine now we may it's may struck us as funny uh, how was it that uh, in the muslim kingdom you know such practices are still happening you know, you know this is this happens with uh, noble uh, circles uh, people who were uh, in power they still sometimes indulge uh, in this practice but it doesn't mean that it is uh, it is allowed uh, some of these people they kept to themselves uh, doing this but uh, uh, it's unfortunately that uh, such things uh, happen in uh, those circles uh, yeah. it's definitely against uh, the Islamic law yet uh, these functions were usually kept out uh, from public uh, knowledge but uh, it was unfortunate uh, incident where Ibn Jubair he was uh, I mean he was confronted by a prince or a noble person and uh, the person forced him to uh, drink seven cups of wine but uh, after you know he was he was trying to avoid uh, such a situation but mm -hmm. uh, failed uh, miserably and after he had drunk you know uh, under under pressure uh, so this noble uh, took pity on him and uh, you know he felt uh, remorse but uh, so, so to signify his remorse he gave Ibn Jubair you know seven cups of gold uh, dinars for all his troubles so uh, Ibn Jubair he undoubtedly he repented and and he had written uh, about his repentance and because of that also he decided to take leave and embark on a journey to perform the pilgrimage the Hajj uh, to Mecca. So that's how uh, his adventure uh, began uh, with an interesting, you know, uh, story about um, how it all began. Mm, yes. Okay. So um, coming back to his uh, travels, uh, you know, journal. What were the interesting observations he made in his, you know, that's quite a journey actually, and he managed yeah. to capture in his book Rehla. Would you share about that, please? Yeah, of course. Uh, so uh, there's so you know many interesting observations that uh, they can be found uh, in, in this book. That uh, it's not that it's quite a thick uh, book, and we are lucky to have a translation done by Roland Broadhurst, uh, entitled "The Travels of Ibn Jubair: mm -hmm. a Medieval Spanish Muslim Visits uh, Makkah, Medina, Egypt, cities of Middle East and uh, Sicily." So I am going to take out several, uh, you know, interesting uh, observations here. Uh, one is his writings on Palermo, uh, his capital city of uh, Sicily, and home to King William II. Uh, well, that's how he observed the hybrid culture of the region, and how Muslim culture was adopted and incorporated, as well as the role of Muslims uh, within uh, the government. So. This is an early observation about Muslims serving in non-Muslim uh, states in Europe. And uh, he talked about the elegance of Palermo. Uh, he said as uh, an ancient and elegant city, uh, magnificent and gracious and seductive to look upon. It was a wonderful place built in Cordoba uh, style entirely from soft limestone. And then, uh, but he... He also voiced a distaste for the embellishment that the king uh, did for the city. Uh, so we said that uh, the palaces, the Frankish uh, palaces were quite uh, pompous. Uh, they got so much uh, embellishment. And then uh, he talked about uh, the Muslim inhabitants of the city, uh, that the Muslims uh, lived in their own suburbs, uh, suburban areas, uh, you know, separate from the Christian denizens and they kept the mosques, uh, the masjids repaired and uh, they come to prayers at the call of the Mu'azin. We're talking about Muslim communities living in non-Muslim uh, kingdom. Yeah. So, uh, and then uh, talking about also uh, the minority uh, position 
uh, that the Muslims have when they are not under the patronage of the king and uh, but the Muslims you know one of the other interesting uh, observation which uh, you know we can see that it still rings quite true today as with the cases of uh, Muslims living in non-Muslims uh, country that uh, they had minority uh, position and uh, the Muslims relied on uh, I mean uh, the, Mus the, the, the Muslims were relied upon for the uh, industry uh, for the works that they do for craftsmanship and important matters uh, of the king uh, they were also uh, you know Muslims who held positions as ministers and chamberlains and public officials but uh, those who were not under the king's uh, patronage they uh, they had less uh, lesser rights than the ones who enjoyed uh, patronage so uh, so to Ibn Jubair's uh, observation they were being used and they their culture uh, was being appropriated and uh, i mean uh, used by those who don't share the same uh, religion of uh, Islam. So that's a little bit about uh, the important uh, observations that uh, Ibn Jubai had made in his book. Right. Thank you, Usni. But you see, yeah. um, you know, yeah. speaking on observation, like, um, yeah. you know, we all travel uh, as mm -hmm. well these days, correct? But yeah. do we actually, you know, when we travel, do we actually um, take notes on what we see around us, especially new places, uh, new surrounding people, you know? So why do you yeah. think it's important that we actually uh, take notes on this and actually write down in a proper, um, you know, journal or something that we can look back properly, not just for us, uh, yeah. but also for our future generations to know what's going on at our time? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think because he was living a living uh, tradition, the rahala mm. or the rihla, because mm. the travel is an important element in intellectual tradition of uh, Islam. Uh, this is this is what uh, many people don't realize. They, they thought that this is what happens when uh, you know you separate uh, from. Uh, tradition you regard uh, when somebody regard the religion as just a uh, ritual and it has nothing to do with this world but rather mm. a secular view uh, of the world but uh, for us muslims uh, religion this world is where we realize the commandments and then uh, of the religion and also uh, realize what temporary what temporary you know, uh, situation, our lives is in this world, but yeah. uh, it is not altogether, you know, uh, profane because this world is something that God created for us uh, to marvel at, mm. to derive uh, lessons uh, from it. Mm. So we see that uh, the early uh, religious scholars, uh, the imams, they regarded as an opportunity to learn about uh, God's uh, creation. Because uh, through the world, one sees the vastness of the world as God created. And mm -hmm. so from that uh, observation, you can gain much uh, knowledge. So even we see that uh, Islam's luminary, Imam Ash uh, Muhammad Idris Shafi'i, he mm -hmm. says it in, in his Diwan, his uh, collection of poetry, uh, if I may translate roughly, that uh, the intelligent cultured men would not settle in in just a place rather you know uh, he says and then he continues to say to his readers that so leave home and mm. and travel so uh based on this book of uh Ibn Jubai, which is not the only one yeah. uh, we have around we have several yeah. other books that uh that focus on traveling we can see that this is how a person is living in the tradition, the whole tradition uh, of travel. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, I hope it answers your question. Yeah, Mas. inshallah. Yeah. yeah, like you said, you know, even us during our selection of which travel should we discuss, you know, we come yeah. across few, such as uh, Ibn Batuta, you know, yes. and we mentioned few other as well. So yes. now let us go back to, um, you know, the travels uh, of Ibn Jubair. Yes. Could you give us a brief rundown on the book, Rehla? 
so uh, this book uh, you know, it captures some of the interesting uh, stories that Ibn Jubayr has uh, during his adventures uh, because mm. uh, we know that from there he talked about how he left uh, Karanata uh, in uh, February 11, 83 with a friend Ahmad Ibn Hassan and then he traveled from Tarifa to Ceuta and sailed to Alexandria in Egypt uh, so we can see that the route they are taking you know, mm-hmm. this Europe between Europe and the and the Arab world is just separated by uh, the Mediterranean, and uh, is quite close, uh, really. Uh, and then he managed to face, you know, various, uh, you know, in in Alexandria, which uh, has fallen under the control of uh, Salahuddin, uh, you know, nearly you know a century, uh, you know, a decade and more. Uh, before, so um, there are several interesting anecdotes that uh, he recorded there. His uh, encounter with the officials uh, of Egypt, uh, those government officials who boarded uh, his ship and interrogated uh, the crew members, and then uh, um, you know also. You know, noting some of the corruption among among the uh, customs official, but according to Ibn Jubair, uh, he had the um, he had the a good opinion about uh, of Salah Salahuddin, uh, saying that uh, the matter must have not known must uh, not have been known to uh, Sultan Salahuddin because if he had known about it, he would have ended uh, such show such uh, a practice and. Uh, but other than this, uh, Ibn Jubay says that uh, he had no bad experience in Egypt except uh, provocation by uh, government uh, officials. And, uh, but uh, he was able to describe the dominion uh, that is Egypt under uh, Salahuddin al-Ayubi. And, yeah. uh, and then uh, he had praises for Salahuddin in saying that uh, there is no congregational or ordinary mosque, no mausoleum built over a grave, no hospital, no theological college where the bounty of the Sultan does not extend to all who seek shelter or uh, live in them. And then, uh, and then he talked about uh, how he performed the Hajj and stayed in Mecca for nine months and his visitations in Medina, uh, in Medina, in in the city of Mosul, in Afghanistan. So, uh, those who want to know what uh, those places look like, the description uh, can read this book. And then uh, he talked about how he crossed the Arabian uh, Peninsula uh, to mm. Aleppo in Syria. And then went down to Damascus, Damask, and then to the city of uh, Acre, that is uh, mm-hmm. known today as Acre, and then waited for the ship uh, that carried him home. And uh, his journey, uh, mm-hmm. this is another adventure because, because his ship sank uh, in the Straits of uh, Messina, mm-hmm. but he was fortunate enough to escape death. Uh, and then he managed to board another ship at Trapani, and arrived in Katarina in 1185. Uh, That's two years after he embarked upon his journey and yeah. then returned to uh, Granada. And uh, on the way back home, he passed mm-hmm. through the city of Sicily, mm-hmm. uh, which is a Christian uh, city. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, he managed to describe in his book the vibrant multiculturalism that he found there. So that's a brief uh, mm-hmm. uh, rundown of the book that uh, I can give. Right, dramatic and interesting. Something yeah. you know to something that you could actually uh, read to distract you from if you have stress from the <laughs> you know even though now you can travel, but actually yeah. it can also inspire you uh, to exactly uh, know how to travel with some knowledge. Exactly. Yeah, because uh, right. because we're talking about. We're talking about this first-hand uh, experience by a traveler. Yeah. They don't go there just to have fun. I mean, right. there's no harm in actually enjoying those uh, views, sightseeing mm. activities. 
but he went there for a purpose and i think i think there's a hadith that talks about uh how you know uh, suffer or or journey uh, mm-hmm. that a muslim uh, can undertake is only allowed in uh, three uh, to three in places you know okay. makkah medina and also uh, masjid al aqsa in, mm-hmm. in uh, jerusalem so he had that he must have had that in his mind when he records these experiences and 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 his talent as mm-hmm. a writer as a government uh, official gave him the ability to put this down into writings into uh, into historical uh, yeah. writing so so because of this uh several other you know it, the book was then copied by uh, many others it was appropriated even the franks uh, used mm-hmm. it as a guide to go around mm-hmm. you know when when they when they were doing uh, you know military operations to to recover uh, to i mean to face uh, salahuddin al ayubi uh, so they use it as a source book a geographical mm-hmm. uh, source book and to see you know to gain some intelligence about uh, the places that are interesting uh, that not interesting that have you know military muslim military presence in them so so there are certain uh, mm-hmm. utility uh, involved when we talk about uh, such a work right okay how would you like to conclude on the travels of imdu jubair would you like to show the book again to our audience yeah. so yeah. uh, so the work of uh, imdu jubair rahla was uh, mm-hmm. among the best although that uh, before that uh, there were you know records like ibn fadlan who traveled uh, to the volga this was in early 10th century i think uh, 9115 if i'm not mistaken and to also where? come again yeah the uh, volga sorry the, yeah the volga uh, river in in near the rush in, in this is the place where uh, i mean in between Uh, England, you know, between Europe and uh, Russia, and now it is uh, in in. Uh, I mean, the Volga were the place where uh, the Vikings uh, used mm-hmm. to reside, and the mm-hmm. Va- Vikings or the Danes were the ancestors. I mean, when they conquered uh, England in uh, in tenth century, eleven, twelve. They then interbing intermingled with the Saxons, so so they were the ancestors of the English uh, people today, mm-hmm. and then that's also where Ibn Fadlan uh, encountered also the Ghuzia, the Oghuz uh, Turkish uh, tribe, and then we can I mean yes. this calls for another episode <laughs> on Ibn Fadlan yeah, yeah. Uh, you know travels. And then also one other figure that I wanted to mention was uh, Serafi, who mm-hmm. traveled to India and China uh, around the beginning of the 10th century. They were, uh, you know, he were he was the contemporary to uh, Ibn Fadlan, mm-hmm. and they were the predecessors to uh, Ibn Jubair in terms of writing, you know, creative travel log, mm-hmm. and, uh, and 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 these, I mean, uh, these works also. You know, uh, were included in uh, later uh, writings by Ibn Juzay, uh, and then, uh, as you said before, Mas uh, uh, Ibn Batuta, Al Sharisi, Al Abdari, Al Maqrizi, and and others. So uh, we can say that also these were the foundations to uh, a genre of work which we call uh, creative uh, travel log you know traveling yeah. and recording down uh, you know observations and experiences and the description of people places uh, and and you know other interesting uh, places and uh, we can see also that in Ibn Jubair his exhaustive descriptions of mosques of tombs mm-hmm. and other uh, monuments these are still, until today they are of great help to archaeologists and uh, art historians uh, today and uh, his journey also uh, can make modern readers wonder about a climate of fear uh, along the maritime and land routes of his days uh, this is talking about 
during that time, a traveler's uh, defenselessness uh, when facing pirates mm. and then uh, corrupt uh, customs uh, officers, like I mentioned before, and yeah. also uh, corrupt traders and you know people who uh, call conmen uh, from all corners of uh, the world, which is not so much. I mean, modern travelers can easily relate to this uh, experience and yeah. you know uh, having this information uh, in hand you know you are armed with uh, the knowledge of how to avoid them uh, in in places and not to be so trusting with uh, you know strangers, strangers who yes. who might want to take advantage uh, yeah. of you so uh, the book rehla again you know, mm-hmm. it helps uh, modern readers to understand the complexity of direct encounters between the uh, two worlds and East and West, mm-hmm. uh, Islam and uh, Christianity, that until his time, they had only been seeing each other from a slant-wise from across uh, the sea. Remember I said that uh, they were just across the Mediterranean, you know, glimpse only from the corner of the eye. Hmm. Right, okay. That's interesting. A lot to learn uh, yeah. from the book, Travels of Ibn Jubair. And I have uh, to close with this one quote from Ibn Battuta, actually. Travelling, it leaves you yeah. speechless, then turns you into a storyteller. So probably you, all of us can actually become a, you know, a storyteller through writing down our travels uh, information so inshallah, we hope this will inspire you to read more books and learn from, uh, you know, good sharing, especially the great works of the Muslim world. And we want to thank you, Husni, for sharing with us. Uh, for the uh, thank you for having episode. me this while. Alhamdulillah, pleasure. So we hope to, uh, you know, uh, share more works with you uh, in the inshallah. future. In inshallah, other inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah. So until then, thank you very much. I see you again. And assalamualaikum. Uh,